Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scenes tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your host, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Welcome to another episode of Inside the Firm. I am Alex Gore. I'm here with graphic design extraordinaire, Lance Psycho. Lance, welcome. It took me, um, see, I learned Photoshop in like 2004. Yep. So it's 2021, 20, 17 years, figure it out. 17 years. Made it, did it. Yeah. Can you believe it? I'm glad. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you learned that. And I remember learning Photoshop and we learned a lot of programs the hard way. Luckily, you don't have to do that anymore. Really? Instead of just... Why is that? Well, instead of having your professor who is normally older... <laughs> yeah. Barely know the program okay. and, and try to struggle through telling yep. you what to do. Yeah. That doesn't work. Reading from a book written by some software engineer sounds terrible. That's terrible. Sounds awful. That's terrible. Uh, and another way to learn is just like ask your friends who semi, who are just like slightly ahead of you, but have no experience in the real, real world. The other way is just like, I'm just going to randomly watch YouTube videos and then put together my own system. Man. Or... You could go to RevitRocketTrip.com where we have perfected, I'm going to say that, perfected how to model in Revit so it mimics how it gets built. You get a template. You get a system. This template comes with um, set up structural views, set up components that you need, set up details that you need. Uh, it's a whole entire system. That makes sense, that is logical, that's supported by families, that's supported by systems, wall systems, floor systems, roof systems. Go to RevitRocketChip.com. That's the only one I'm going to promote today, Revit Rocket Chip. Man, you know what can also be important besides learning Revit Rocket Chip? BIM! BIM can be important for your next project, but it's, it's not the only thing you need for your next project. That's right, because you'll need, obviously, that's why it's important that 95% of manufacturers who offer free BIM files on our CAT also offer another type of data for your project needs. That means 95% of the products with BIM also have CAD files. That's right, the old school 2D CAD files out and are in specification in a patent spec wizard and or have product information to help you make the right selection. So stop going to a site with just BIM. That's boring. Go to rcat.com to get everything you need for your project for free and without registering. That's rcat, A-R-C-A-T dot com. Start building better content today. You know where else you need to go to, Al? Uh, Pellaluxury.com forward slash the firm. Because you've never experienced a brand like this before. That's right. The collection of brands within the luxury division of Pella are the conversation starters, the pioneers of the industry who provide window and door solutions to discerning architects, the building industry, and beyond. They have decades of experience creating things no one else in the world is creating. I'm telling you, go to pellaluxury.com forward slash firm. Tell me I'm lying about that last statement. And the collection of brands are brought together to complement and build on one another. They don't push beyond the limits. They set them. Explore pellaluxury.com forward slash the firm today. If you haven't done it yet, check them out. Get some windows, get in contact with them, tell them inside the firm sent you. Al Gore. Okay, I think um, you're going to unpack what two second lean is. Oh, and I, man. And I saw I you am, making something. I am unbanned from the Facebook, Ooh. and therefore uh, the social media overlords allow me to talk to my friends again. It's Good. neat. <laughs> that is it's neat. real neat. Yeah. And so one of my friends. Uh, and a and an avid listener of the podcast, Kyle Gobrinson. Sounds like a Russian bot. <laughs> up in North Dakota. Uh, For sure a Russian yeah, bot. Yeah, definitely got to be a Russian bot. He got in touch with me. And so what I'm going to pull up on the screen, Al, is he said, Hey, mm. I want to know about how you guys do your two-second lean meetings. So I'm actually recording and I'm going to do share with the audience ahead of my next meeting, which I will do the two second lean meeting on uh, Monday the 30th. So it's, uh, it's August 20th as we're recording this. So it's 10 days away. Y'all are getting a preview. Okay. You aren't until then. 
Okay, that's fine. That's fair. Al Al Gore made this. He makes the two second lean uh, meetings. Yes, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> So, uh, so here's so here's what it is basically. We've got, uh, as you can see on the right hand side, we've got F9 principles. We've got the nine principles, and then we've got the F14 effing rules, and that's for our construction arm. Um, so eventually, we'll have the construction uh, crew once they're a little bit more seasoned. I think maybe do some of this stuff. We'll see. And it's also just so Lance was, We talked about a principle, and you can pick an F4, F9 principle or an F14 effing rule. Mm-hmm. To talk about. Yep, exactly. So basically, here's how it works. So Al's got a little chart up here, a little calendar. It's uh, Monday through Monday through Friday, obviously. It has the dates, and it has our staff, including me and Al, and when we are supposed to present. So everybody's given this, obviously, now I think like almost two weeks in advance at this point. Al, yep. Al's kicking butt, being on top of it. And so <clears throat> um, the morning... Uh, uh, W4P is basically a win. So what is your win for the week? Tell everybody about your win. You can talk about it for five minutes, uh, the, kind of the whole thing. And so our win, obviously, was that uh, Alex Gresh re-signed with F9. We had his one-year review. And that is actually one of the points I'm going to, or the topics we're going to talk about later on in the episode, which is how to retain staff in the middle of the great resignation. I don't even know if Al knows ah about this uh, viral thing that's going around. Have you seen this hashtag? No, but I have some thoughts. Okay, Uh, great. Uh, There's an article I'm going to unpack. I I had no idea this was a thing on the internet mm -hmm. until until yesterday. For some reason, like it took two months because this guy, you'll see in the article, came out on May 10th. Anyway, Gresh resigned. That's huge. Uh, He is one of our um, most seasoned veterans here and really hoping to continue to building, building the firm with him. So uh, super happy that he's he's back for another year at the very least. Uh, the project review, this kind of ties into what Kyle was asking for mm-hmm. is he was also wanting to see, I think he's on episode 219, I think this is 222 or something um, that we're recording today. What is your executive decision-making process? Because he was, he was saying that uh, he's a leader um, and a manager over at his firm and he was he's wanting to imp- get something over there in the same kind of way. So the project, I just made it up. I mean, it kind of was like a makeup. I think when you're at administrative level, like you kind of make stuff up for the betterment of the firm, right? Yeah, no, no, no. You're working on your firm instead of in your firm. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, exactly. He, he said it way better. That's why he's in. That's why he's the host. <laughs> co- he's the host in charge. M- mediocre co-host over here. Yeah. So um, the exe- So this is just a recap again. The executive decisions made easy chart that I made for the firm. So. Uh, I actually failed to present this at my last lean meeting. So right. I'm going to actually do it on the 30th to the firm. Yep. So normally people would present a project. Hey, here's a house I'm working on. Here's what it looks like. Things like that. And and let me go back to the uh, sheet again. So Lance is going through these point by points, but I'm going to give you all of them at once. You say a win. Mm-hmm. Then you do a project review and you don't have to do them in order. Then you say a principle a problem that you're having and a process improvement. Yes. Right. And sometimes it's like, it's like I almost start with a problem. Then I review the project and then what principle I followed and then what improvement I've made. I think that's a good recap because you, you don't have to go in order. I go in order, but just because I'm a very linear thinker, it doesn't matter. Yep. You, you can make it your own. Yep. But, but those having those keys in there, the one, two, three, four, five, those five points, to kind of go over, I think is yep. the bread and butter. And and they're literally <laughs> only about five minutes each each day. They're they're very short, and it even says five minutes. And there's five things. So like, if you were anal and you did the math, it's like don't spend more than a minute on each one. I think this is ov- my kind of overall take on doing this. Uh, I don't. There was no resistance. I don't think from anybody. Um, and it has it has what I think it's done for the firm is is it really tied everybody together in a way that wasn't happening before we know about projects that we which is silly like in a in a 10 person firm didn't know about yeah and and then there's problems too that alex my alex's uh staff might not have seen for instance today we're working in a new jurisdiction alex was like what 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 are they talking about and so 
who knows, maybe in a month, two months, Al will get some big project out in that place. And then like, we'll all already be caught up to that and there'll be less surprises yep. for his staff to uncover. And and it was such, they are doing things in such a weird way and so confusing that like it's wasting time and resources. Um, but now everyone in the firm knows. So even in like two years, let's say one of the people just starting, it's like, oh, someone's asking me this question about this. Alarm bells go off. This I need to talk to someone that's worked in this city before. Um, so it, it it's that's one of the most helpful things is just learning about other people's projects. And then two, it's not always a hit right away, but these two second improvements, some of them I'm like, oh, that was great. Some or of them, some of them honestly, maybe maybe us included have not done a good job. Right. Right. And then it can be as simple as I'm not saying this is an amazing one, but one part we have a title block and every time he'd have to redline and go change the date mm. for a title block for this project. He'd either have to make whoever's working for him do it or he'd have to do it. And this is years, right? Years of this. He's like, oh, I just made it an automatic timestamp. So it's just automatically updated now. Yeah. I never have to do that again. Yep. Yep. Simple, simple little stuff that goes a long way, especially when you multiply it. Right. So. Uh, the principle, back to this chart here, uh, speaking of uh, multiplying, so the principle I use for this is that training is a mul force multiplier. And so if you look over here, that's how we're really tying it and kind of circling back and, and, and having the feedback loop 100% looped in. So number three is the principle I use, training is a force multiplier, because the idea is, uh, and then the problem I was trying to address is there's no concrete path to make executive decisions established in the firm. Here it is. And hopefully this does make it so that I'm answering less questions. Uh, project managers and senior project managers that are under me and Al are then having to answer less questions from their, from their staff that are working with them. Mm -hmm. So all the way through. Um, that is, Kyle, I hope that helped. And I hope that kind of showed what we do. And then the process improvement obviously was the chart itself. So it sometimes chart. it can go back and sometimes it can go um, in they can like two can two you can kill two two birds with one stone so to speak right because you see like executive decisions here executive decisions here and and that's normally on on like our level because a lot of people will do a project and their improvement will be something totally different like make putting the time stamp yeah, on a, a graphic standard yeah or something like that uh to give you a couple examples too of maybe from a, a more administrative one maybe you can think of one while i'm going to talk about the next one is uh like invoicing there was um some oh. I literally are sponsors for the podcast. <laughs> I made it so that it automatically invoices them on the first of the month. I don't have to do it anymore. Well, it just, it just automatically does it. Another one, someone else did not me, me or you invoicing. Some, some people that we work with are not tech savvy at all. And then I remember too, the first time I got invoices from QuickBook, it's like you got to quick click on the link and then you just see a number. This happened to me. So I know what happens to other people. When I, get invoices all the time. I was like, what, what do I owe you $10,000 for? Mm -hmm. I get an email saying you own $10,000. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then I click on it and then it goes to a website and it says $10,000. I was like, oh, okay. still, what do I owe? Oh, now I need to go to the invoice and click on the invoice. Okay. This is what I'm paying you $10,000 for. Gotcha. But it took me those steps. Some people don't go through those steps. They just email reply. Why, why are you, why are you charging me $10,000? Yeah. And <clears throat> What one of our uh, people came up with was in QuickBooks, you know, you can put your invoice, you, you lay out what you're invoicing for, mm -hmm. and then it sends out an automatic email. And in that email it says, Hey, you know, we appreciate your prompt payment. He just decided I'm going to copy what the invoice is for and just put it in the email so that they see it fresh right away. It's like, Oh, that's, that's great. Because now you don't have to answer those questions and repoint out like, and say, did you even look at the invoice? We're did 11, you click on the invoice? And guess what, ladies and gents, we are thirty. We are eleven days away from finding out if it's gonna work because we bill at the end of the month for a lot of folks. Oh yeah, right. So then, because like, what happens is like we'll get, like Alex was saying, send out the email and then crazy emails back. Like what? So hopefully we're just more explicit. Yeah. And uh, with what we're doing. Yeah. Neat. All right, I've got an article for you, Al. Okay, let's let's hear what what's it about. Uh, so Forbes published this article on uh, about a month ago, on July twenty second. It is titled "Post Pandemic Burnout Spurs the Great Resignation Ooh. Among Workers." Don't we just love buzzwords yeah. in America? Uh, so 
Uh, author starts here. I'll tell you one thing for sure. My outlook this July is certainly a lot brighter than that of July 2020. After such a long and difficult 18 months, it's starting to feel like things are finally getting back to some type of normal. I finally have the chance to connect with my career coaching clients in person again, which, let me tell you, has been such a blessing. While I know I tend to be an optimist, and I and don't we all deserve a bit of positivity, there's one thing that has been really troubling me lately. Despite all the good news in the fight against COVID-19, workers are still very much grappling with the fallout and the burnout from the many changes that have come to the world of work since March 2020. In May, Anthony Klotz, Associate Professor of Management at Texas A&M, made major waves when he told Bloomberg Businessweek that we should expect a, quote, quote, great resignation. As many workers fed up with the challenges of remote work during the pandemic, hang up their hats and call it quits at their current jobs. Wait a minute, I thought everybody loved remote work. Klot cites a number of factors likely to contribute many employees resig- resigning from their current jobs between working longer hours, the stress of transitioning to remote work, uncertainty about the future of returning to the office, as well as the general stress and trauma related to COVID-19. All of these factors spell burnout for workers, which has left many unsure of how they want to move forward in their current role. Here's a look at some of the reasons workers are feeling burnt out. If this sounds all too familiar, below are some of the ways to recover from burnout. Um, So I'm just going to do the headlines and not actually read them in detail. Surges in hours and responsibilities remain at the root of the burnout for many. Uh, Be honest with your... Well, let's see here. Uh, Where? Maybe I've skipped. I'm sorry. Well, I think that's the big one. That's the big one, I think. Yeah. So basically... Uh, in December 2020, a study found that 76% of U.S. 76% of U.S. workers admit to feeling burnout, with 37% citing stress about COVID-19 as a direct contributor to fatigue at their work. Um, so they were worried about contracting it. Um, and then another study found that 70% of newly remote workers have been putting in time on weekends. This, isn't 70% this a, is it, high. It, that's very high. And this is a clap back to all of the freaking uh everybody clamoring over we're, we're never going back we love remote work it's just we're doing and i just never bought it i never bought it because we tried it we were prepared for it before we even needed to be prepared for it we've talked about it. if you go back to march of 2020 or whenever the pandemic started yeah and you heard us about going you know black for two weeks we were ready for it but I think Al lasted a day or two. I lasted four days. And then staff started lasting a little bit less after that. And like they wanted to come back. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I, I think the major thing here is that uh, people, people are not seeing or feeling second order effects in time. Or they're not attributing them to their root causes. Meaning when, when I started whatever stupid diet that I pretend is... A real diet basically it just means eliminating stuff right sure and if i'm ever strict on that and then all of a sudden i have a cake i re- like it will throw me for a loop now if i'm re eating regular al food i'm eating or let's say lance food to pick on him you're eating taco johns you're eating this you're eating that you're eating a bag taco of Dur- yesterday yep. five tacos yep yep you're eating a bag of doritos right and all of a sudden you have a cake there's no effect Like it just feels, it's just all the, it's just, it's just regular, right? So what I mean like that is what if you don't sense what the second order effects are and you don't attribute it to what you're doing, right? Because this is what's happening, which they kind of laid out and you kind of laid out, right? Oh, I work from home. Great. What are the positives? No traffic. Don't like that, right? Also, I get flexibility. So meaning like, hey, if I want to do the laundry, I'll do the laundry. If I want to do, um, need to take my kid need to watch a show. Hey, some sh- I want to take a break. I'm going to literally turn on the TV for a half hour because I'll just work later. Yoga, right? whatever. Yeah, all, all that kind of stuff. You have that all that positive stuff, just like the cake. Hey, cake is delicious. It tastes really, really good. But are you going to have a crash later? Do you even realize the cr- crash later? Or does it have to build up so that you're having so much cake that all of a sudden it's 10 months down the road and you're like, why am I 10 pounds heavier and it's not muscle? I am not happy. This is depressive. I've noticed this with ice cream. I've noticed ice cream will literally make me more depressed the next day. 
Yeah, I'm with the you. next day, I'm with right? You. And didn't notice that on like a, a normal, yeah, you know, situation. This is a great analogy, right? So, what are the negative effects that you are not attributing to working from home? You don't have a connection with people. You don't. You don't have that physical looking in your eyes, seeing your spider brain right here in front of my face. Spiders. Yeah. Um, two. You are always on. That's what, that was the main thing. You are always on. Always yes. on. And it's terrible. And I don't, I'm, I'm it pretty is sure. terrible. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, ladies and gents, I've been, as everybody knows, I've been taking Wednesdays off July, August. When I come down now from the hill, it's growing. It's amazing. Yeah. When I come down from the hill, I am, I am finding it easier and easier to not turn my phone back on. I've been like, sometimes I'll come back down the hill and I'm like, oh, I didn't turn it on until 8 p.m. Yeah. Today. Yep. Well, let's go to that. You probably do this, but like maybe it was only two years ago. I would wake up in bed at whatever time I'd look at my phone Terrible. and I would start looking at emails. No. And I did that for years, for years. And then I just stopped at one time. I can't remember what it was, but I think it was like a Saturday. Like I woke up and I was like, oh, okay. The kids aren't bothering me, which is like, what is happening to my life? Like oh, they're sleeping. I'll check my phone as, and then I thought like, Oh no, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to go downstairs. And I, and then I remembered back. Yeah. I was like, like, Oh, this would be terrible. Remember what I used don't to do. do? That. Right. So you don't <clears throat> right now. It's not a big deal. Oh, Hey, it's seven o'clock. I'm just going to go back to work or I'm going to, you know, do that. And it might be fine. Like you're, let's say you have a wife and kids or you have a husband and kids and your husband is fine doing something and your kids are playing by yourself. Like you are right that maybe that work is no big deal. Right. To, to do that. But a piece of cake isn't too big of a deal either. It's not illegal to have a piece of cake. You can have a piece of cake. But how much is this building up? And and then how much of a huge toll is it taking all at once? And then the third one too is going back to the connection. The first one I said people just face to face. And I just meant that in like a social aspect. The answers. Like you're not having that connections to answers to what's going on to, hey, we talked to, oh, someone had a similar problem. I'll just go talk to them or, or, hey, I want to run an idea past you. Like, are you going to, I don't know how many stupid ideas I've told you over the last 10 years. Like many, mm -hmm. many, many, many. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it's just due to proximity. Like me, like, hey, mm -hmm. what do you think about this? Yeah. And I mean, these are legitimately uh, stupid ideas. Uh, well, but I, I think don't overlook that spontaneity that can happen with in person i'm telling you 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 are we are doing ourselves a disservice if we all decide like no no our firms are 100 percent remote it's like get out of here like get out of here with this like i'm an extremist that's the thing yeah. you know <laughs> yep. don't be like me with 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 ideas and stuff like that um i'm joking but you know what i mean like it, it there's no there's a nice gray area i think that really is what it's all about exactly yeah exactly so to just wrap up that point is like, you're not going to call someone for literally just like a two sentence thing. You can look over or I'll even like not shout, but like go across like and talk to someone about some book or something like that. I would never call them for that. Bingo. I would never chat, you know, like there's a magic that's going to get lost. I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, two last things I want to talk about is just some stats is uh so workers are not only taking more, hour, more hours but more, more responsibility with 36 percent noting increased responsibility that's a problem and women seem to be more likely to experience burnout with 80 percent of women reporting reporting burnout versus 72 percent of male workers so before we all jump on this whole train of working remotely 100 percent, i think we need to take a step back and look at it and think about it and evaluate it. Sure, it works for some people, but I do not think it is a one-size-fits-all sort of thing. Do you know where I think that increased responsibility is coming from? I do want to know. What are you thinking? I think that's not the ability to figure things out in a group. So for I see what you mean. Be able to turn. Exactly. Like you're having to shoulder. You almost feel like you have to shoulder the whole thing versus being having teammates right next to you. Exactly. Like you might tell, hey, hey, Ross, here's a project. Figure out the code, blah, 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 blah. And literally drive to the job site. And Ross will be like, okay, that's my responsibility. But I know that Gresh had something like that. And Jason does those projects all the time. So I'm going to give it a try. And if I have any questions, I'll just look over and just ask, ask those people. Versus you're at home. Hey, Ross, do this code analysis. Do this. Bye. You're still driving to the job site doing something different. 
It's a totally different level of responsibility. I I feel like that's a total different sentence. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Uh so where I was going, where I ultimately wanted to go with this is that how how do you then avoid a great resignation in your in your firm? And I think I think the biggest lesson that we have learned over and over again is listening to employees and being receptive. Yeah. And we just went over this with uh we just so don't have a one size fits all approach. Mm -hmm. Like we just talked about, uh, everybody has different salary requirements. Everybody has different vacation, um, ideas, bonus ideas, healthcare, uh, ideas. If you can maintain your, your company culture and listen and be receptive to employees, I think that's one of the, the biggest step forward you can make to retain employees like Alex Gresh during the great resignation and don't make these big pivots and think this is all going to work out just because there's buzzwords going around and people are loving this idea of working remotely. Thoughts? Yeah. Uh, one reason that, that we did to help out, because there are negatives to the, the big negatives that I feel like people always say is, I hate the drive and I mm -hmm. want more flexibility, right? Well, one, okay, there's people in Denver. We need to open a Denver office. We, we, had, we had to, or yep. else we weren't responding and we weren't retaining yep i mean that was that, that was a big listening and like here we go okay yep so just so i don't know where i was going with that but like there are other ways i, was, I think you just made a good example that's all i was i need one example from you before you read a tweet okay <laughs> so we've said this principle before and i just saw this uh tweet and i thought that it was a great way of making a circular chain of logic right so this is from uh, Sal Hill, S-A-H-I-L. Don't know who that is. Don't know how it popped up. Um, but this is what the quote is. The busiest are the most responsive. So you've heard that like, if you want to get work done, get of it to a busy person. So this is a different take on this. The busiest are the most responsive because the most responsive are the most successful and the most successful become the busiest. So like how that tied it in, like the most successful are busy because a lot because there's <laughs> because a lot of people want to work with successful people. Mm -hmm. Right. So it goes back to our respond quickly. Yes. Principle. Yes, exactly. I think one, the thing, here's what caught my eye when you first were talking about, or when, when I first saw this on the schedule for today was I don't want to, and actually our, even our social media manager, uh, the first title of was going to be like, uh, we're or it was going to be in the description of like busyness. And, um, I was like, Oh, is that going to come off? Don't be busy just for sake of busy. Oh, right. Terrible. At all. No. Terrible thing to do. Very bad. Right? Um, so be... What is it? It's like just I think success attracts success. Mm -hmm. um, people, it does. People that are go-getters attract other go-getters. Yep. Uh, so is that where you're going with that little tweet, Mr. No, Brown? I just thought it reinforced uh, principle, right? Ah, uh, yes. That was um, but... But... Mm -hmm. know that there's a double-edged sword too. Uh, here's one just like an introspective. I, I've noticed I am impatient. What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Are you? Honestly? Seriously? That's not real. Okay. I'm glad I've I've hi hit it well. Good. He's uh, He hides it for me really well. Yeah. Um, I think he's patient. Oh, every Friday Good lunch. Good job, Al. <laughs> every Friday lunch. Every lunch I go to where people are just dilly-dallying on what they're ordering and like not... I'm like what is happening now? Like, I'm like, why is this happening? How do you not know what we're here for? How do you not know that the way you, you can know? never hike with my wife? I, if I talk to my wife during a hike, she will stop and turn around and talk to me. And I'm like, we can talk and walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the um, way, speaking of my wife, check out this special episode this last Wednesday. She was on there and basically she breaks down. Will the housing market crash? I'm not going to spoiler alert it. Check it out. You yep. can really check that out. Yep. But here's what I go to double-edged swords. You, you already know this too. Like your strength is your weakness too. hundred percent. So it, it's a strength in like, let's get things done. Let's call. Let's talk to that person. Send out that email. You know, do get work done. But then it also comes to like, when, <laughs> when I'm writing notes and whatever, like they'll be shitty. They'll be uh, bad notes because I'm, I'm too impatient to, to write it out. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it leads to my spelling errors too. I'm like, I'd ah, just get the jits of the word done. You got it. 
right? It, well, I'm a lot more. I don't want to be forgiving of your spelling. Now you're make, I feel like you're making me forgiving of your spelling. I don't know why it would. Anyways, uh, same <laughs> thing too. Like if you're in, if if you're in too much of a hurry mm-hmm. in a conversation, you'll either forget key parts of it or gloss over or not understand it too. Yeah. So it's like it's. I, I don't know how we transitioned to this, but know that it. It's a double-edged sword, you know. Being yeah. impatient is is has led to a lot of success. Yeah, you know, and while but Al, while it's Al not has, like there's not a cost. Well, Al has been babbling on. My impatience has grown because <laughs> I haven't heard from I haven't heard from Nick for a long time. Here we go with Nick with Nick Reeds. Hello, best friends. I hope you all had a great week this week. A reading. I stopped thinking the way other people think a long time ago. You gotta think like you think. And going one more round when you don't think you can, that's what makes all the difference in your life. Sylvester Stallone. Toodles! I could not agree more. Uh, Last Saturday... I hiked up to another alpine lake, and then there was no trail between that lake and the next lake. And I was like, oh, man. And then I got halfway there, and I was through brush, and it was crazy. And I was like, I don't know. Maybe I should just turn around. But I didn't, and I had one of the best fishing days of my life. Wow. Go that extra round every time. Fishing podcast. Every time. This is That's been Lance <laughs> Psycho of Catchy, the new podcast. <laughs> catchy. <laughs> <laughs> it's catchy. Yeah, it's catchy. Uh, let's have another round of ARE Jeopardy. What do you think? Let's bring down the team. Question one. Where should the vapor barrier be placed in the wall construction in a cooling climate such as Amarillo, Texas? Amarillo is key. If you haven't been there, go there and drive right through it. (laughs) Uh, A, on both sides both the interior and exterior side of the thermal envelope B on the interior side of the thermal envelope C a vapor barrier is not needed or D on the exterior side of the thermal envelope what is your answer Amarillo by morning you will be judged harshly it's you when you drive to Texas from Colorado you you're driving you're like why is there a, a giant city in the middle of nowhere that's what Amarillo is and, Huge city. And then George Strait plays yep. on the radio. Okay. B, C, D, A. One person is right with D. Mark it Yeah. And Y should be on the warm side of the thermal envelope. And Amarillo is hot. The outside is the warm side. You right? It. It's a cooling climate, so it's majority cooling. Uh, question two. You will get that on what? the airy. I guarantee it. Is the definition of an arterial road, is it A, a road with on slash off ramps and a speed limit that are usually 55 miles per hour or higher? Huh? Is it B, a road that runs, you're just going to have to guess on this, (laughs) a road that runs through the residential area of a neighborhood? Is it C, a road that resident Chill streets connect to in order to take traffic to a main thoroughfare or D a high capacity road that connects to freeways. Do, 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 do. C, C, D, C. Okay. No one got it right. The correct answer is D. And this is what, so Jason, I'm looking at you. So D says a high capacity road that connects to a freeway. So we were just talking to Longmont, and they're talking about an artillery road. Is this what you're thinking about? The one on Ninth, and they, it's a residential street that connects in order to uh, to a main thoroughfare. There's so, a reason that I answered C. exactly. So this is what's so upsetting about the area. Mm. It's like yeah, I just talked to the city that I work in, and mm. they say this answer, and you say that answer. So good, yay! We got one right so far. I no, nailing it. Two. Dang, yeah. my bad. All right, she's, she's going to keep on crushing. Number three, what is the suggested approach architects should take in relation to new materials? 
A, rely on claims made by the material and product manufacturers. B, avoid new products. C, practice innovation combined with caution, especially in hostile environment ex environmental exposures and at scales exceeding past experience. Or D, use new materials even in untested environmental exposures, since that is part of the excitement of the architectural practice. Anybody need to? Okay, we've already got answers. People are just guessing. I love it. C, 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 C. The correct answer is C. Great job. Wow. Number four. Core 10 steel was heavily promoted by the steel industry in the 1960s and 1970s as a maintenance-free material. What was supposed to make it corrosion resistant? Is it A, cathodic protection? B, its thickness? C, applied coating? D, rusting just enough to protect from further rust penetration. Everybody loves core 10. D, 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 C. The correct answer is D. I feel like we got a winner over here. Three? Four. 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 Where are we going to eat? Where we're out picked. Collision Brewery. Yeah. Oh, wow. Great minds think alike. Take us out. Speaking of likes, make sure you smash that like button. Hit hit the subscribe. Leave us a comment on the YouTube and a five-star review if you are a terrestrial listener on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever you're listening. See you next week.